what do companies forget when it comes to customer experience? It, it feels like you're focused on not just your customer's experience, but their customer's experience. So it seems like you're thinking a lot about the customer and, and, and the value, the, the sort of uh, chain of value creation and how it's going to affect these different audiences. But what are, what are some of the things that have sort of been highlighted? Uh, I mean, one of them right there is just that uh, immediacy, but also just the, uh, you know, don't make me wait, just come tell me some information. But wh where does groundwork and sort of customer service intersect? Yeah, I think um, there's a there's a book called They Ask and Answer, uh, written by Mark Sheridan. Hmm. Um, and, and, you know, it's really just a, a, a play on really what it says, they ask and answer, what does your what does your end customer want? Mm -hmm. And, you know, our approach has been to provide contractors with a way to provide some answers and to provide that collaboration much quicker than the previous process. So um, that's one interesting aspect we've run up against and, and kind of realized as we've gone through this is, you know, if you can be the answer point, you know, the, the guide, the Sherpa on the journey uh, mm -hmm. for your end customer, then you're in a really, really good spot. Um, and, and a lot of times it doesn't take, that doesn't take a lot of time, uh, to just provide some information and to be, start to be that guide. You can do it with digital content. You can do it with, you know, a tool like we have, uh, to provide a little more granular feedback. But when, when you get that, uh, approach to helping to become the guide, that mm -hmm. can be really powerful. Um, the other thing that I'll mention here is just consistency in the experience. Mm. Um, you know, we have um seen that contractors don't have a process in their sales in their sales funnel um so it's willy-nilly uh you're not telling somebody what's coming next that's good um, and yeah. when, you, when you create those gaps in the process and there's communication gaps that creates a trust gap and uh you know you're really fighting uphill once you get to that point so uh those are a couple things that um, from a customer yeah. experience perspective, we see a lot of that with digital products and um, in that world from like an Apple Tesla perspective, um, mm -hmm. but service businesses are, are just the same. Uh, yeah. The buyers are the same. And I think those experiences uh, matching those digital experiences and the kind of consumer brand experiences with uh, the service side of the business and that business model um, is just making a whole lot more sense. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. The, the, the sales process starts, or the customer service experience starts before the deal is closed. So before someone actually becomes a customer, they're already building an impression of sort of how, you know, and they may not have a better option on who they're choosing as a service provider. So they're sort of chalking it up to, oh, this is not looking good, or oh, I'm nervous about this. And all of that insecurity from the sales process being rough bleeds into, and is probably uh, accurately assumed to also be the case during the service delivery. So yeah, it, tightening up the sales process is good discipline uh, across the board for creating a better experience and, and maintaining trust uh, before someone becomes a customer. That's really good.